All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about why I think that the SC Hunglis II is such an excellent survival blade as a whole. And so without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Instagram, the Patreon, all of it helps a ton. Now let's talk about the awesome Hunglis II. Now, I have done a review on this guy, and I've already talked about and sung many of the praises of it, but I want to do a video specifically talking about why I think that the Hunglis 2 is a really awesome, just general purpose survival tool. And like I said, and I've said in many of my videos, this is kind of my go-to um, scouting knife because it is such an excellent blade at replacing tools like a saw and a hatchet. Now, of course, whenever it comes to a one-tool option, you're never going to have your cake and eat it too. It's not going to be a perfect solution, of course. If it was, we would all ditch our axes, our hatchets, and our saws to just have a hungless too. So it's obviously not perfect, but, but this blade is a really solid one tool option or multi-roll knife. And the primary reason why that is, is to two parts. Essentially, its overall size is the first part. Its overall size is in this really kind of sweet area where it's not too large, it's not too small, and it just ultimately is big enough to handle, you know, things like batoning with great ease. It's also large enough to have enough weight and substantiated size to chop through, you know, medium to lightweight brush with relative ease. It's also, though not too large, where doing things like feather sticking are out of the realm of reason. And what I mean by that is when you start to push into a lot of your machetes, um, you end up getting into knives that just are too large or too heavy to sit there and really control well. Also to the ergonomics of most machetes don't lend themselves very well to being close up on the very back side of that cutting edge. Once again, most machetes are designed to be choked back where you're using kind of the belly portion of your blade to do things like sweeping cuts. So this blade I find really does quite well in its size. So the next part, like I said, the first part was its size. The next part is its ergonomics. And SE with both the Hunglis and the Hunglis 2 have basically the same ergonomics, but especially on the Hunglis 2, the ergonomics are very hard to do exactly describe. But once again, you have towards the front portion of the blade or front portion of the handle, ultimately, you have a very deep, very large recessed portion for your hand to get into. And that helps with a lot of control back on the very beginning or the very beginning of the blade. So when you want to do things like feather sticking or notching or smaller controlled tasks where you need ample control of the blade, you can easily sit here like this and have good control over the blade. Now I will say it would have been nice if they had a finger choil on this knife, but I don't really blame them for that, especially with this very deep, almost choil-like portion of the hand guard. Uh, you know, it probably would be hard to have a proper finger choil because you have such a deep portion or deep cutout for the blade or the handle. So that's kind of the front portion of the handle. The back portion of the handle is where it is also quite useful and quite well engineered. So you do have a nice deep kind of groove to help keep your hand back or keep your hand on the blade, but also back at the same time. So when you do want to move this blade into a kind of chopping roll, or if you're going to be doing, you know, swing cuts, you can choke back on this handle very well, very comfortably and very securely. Like this blade isn't going to just fall out of your hands because you are really locked in so it allows you to do sweet cuts very well and chopping very well in addition to that though overall the handle is just very well contoured even holding it in the center you know to get more of a multi-purpose multi-role grip it is still an incredibly comfortable knife any way that you hold it it's very hard to find an uncomfortable spot on this handle as a whole which is really a testament to SC's design and philosophy for the Hunglis and the Hunglis 2. So I think that between the size and between the handle ergonomics, this is what really makes this blade such a fantastic multi-role blade. The last part that I think really helps this blade stand out is its overall grind. So this blade is not quite a full flat grind. It's kind of deceptive because the grind goes so far up. This is technically a flat grind or saber grind as some may say because this back portion of the spine is not, you know, 
being ground down. So this portion kind of levels off. So you get this weird kind of quasi almost full flat grind, but not quite full flat grind. And I think that's what it's again, you know, partly to help add some weight to the tool so that when you want to chop, you have a good amount of weight in the spine of the tool. You also have a good amount of thickness for rigidity for hard use. But at the same time too, it's near full flat grind does help really narrow this edge out so that when you are cutting with it, you are dealing with a very fine edge that doesn't have a lot of material behind it. So there's less resistance to your cuts or your cutting as a whole. So ultimately, you know, this blade isn't going to be the best for doing things such as skinning game animals or stuff like that. But this blade will be very useful for a wide variety of camp tasks, blazing trails, once again, clearing brush, light, clearing light to medium duty brush. It's not the best brush clear or brush trail blazer, but this is still a pretty darn good multi-roll blade and it can be pushed into a, a wide variety of tasks. You could probably even within reason push it into a semi, you know, tactical uh, type of situation if you needed it to. I know that the Hulus 2 was designed for, um, I'm not exactly sure which special forces groups, but there were military or militant groups in South America that did request a smaller version of the Hooglis or the Hooglis 2 for their general operations down in the Amazon and different South American jungles. So this definitely does have some military use or credence to it uh, and some design. So it can definitely be pushed into almost a combat survival knife style. Now for me, Obviously, I don't have the combat experience, but for me, I probably would not take this. I would probably lean, if I wanted a larger combat survival knife, more towards something like a CRK, a CRK Pacific or something like a TRC Apocalypse would probably be more my kind of uh, lean, but uh, that'd probably be more like what I would want to go for. But this blade definitely is not bad if, if given that role. So anyways, guys, that is some of the reasons why I think that the SC Hunglus 2 is a fantastic uh, survival knife. If you are looking for a larger survival knife, it's super hard to go wrong with this guy. In addition to the sheath is also very fantastic. Of course, it is similar to the Hunglus in its variable uh, tension, as you guys can see there, but it is a big slab of Kydex and of course it does come with a nylon ballistic nylon backer that you can use or you can take off and you can run this thing scout style or you can lash it to the back of a backpack. Uh, there are a plethora of different options for how you want to rig your Hooglis 2 to different uh, LBV packs, molly, uh, or even your body. So anyways guys that is the Hooglis 2 in a nutshell and why I think it's a pretty fantastic survival tool. As always guys God bless and I'm out.